Today we're going to be replacing the starter motor and hopefully fixing the hot start issue with my Toyota RAV4. So it's a Mark II RAV4 and it's got the 2 litre D4D engine in there. As I understand it, the main issue with uh, hot start is about the speed the engine's turning over to start. So the engine has to turn over on the starter motor at about 600 RPM, at which point there's a signal sent from the crank sensor to the fuel, to the suction control valves and stuff, and then it'll fire up. Um, if it's below that speed, there's no fuel, so that's why it won't start. Now there's a few reasons why your starter motor or your engine might not be turning over that fast. The simple one could be just that you've got dirty terminals on the battery, so it's always worth cleaning the, the battery terminals before you do all this to make sure there's no fault there and you've got a good current getting to your starter motor. Um, I have actually replaced the battery on this and it kind of fixed the fault, so it will start um, when it's hot now, but you have to crank it for a while and that's not ideal. So it's not actually fixing the fault, it's just kind of putting a band-aid over it. So it could be a weak battery and that's why you're not turning over fast enough. The Bosch S4029, which is 95 amp hours and 830 amps, was the biggest and most powerful battery I could find locally that would fit in here. The starter motor that came in this car as stock is a 1.4 kilowatt. Um, we're actually going to be upgrading it today um, to a 2.2, so it's got more cranking power and it gets up to speed um, easier. Um, the issue with the 1.4 is when it gets hot, it becomes less efficient, um, especially as the age, um, and then it's not turning over as fast. Now some people online have suggested the suction control valves could be an issue and they've actually been replaced on this because they failed because what actually happens is they, the fuel crystallizes in the early designs um, and say so they block up. Now why that would be related to heat I'm not entirely sure but it could be something you may need to look into if all these other solutions don't help you fix the fault. If you do have to replace the suction control valves you can get them from Hogs in Sheffield in the UK. Um, now I believe they sell those to the main dealers, they actually supply the main dealers so you'd be getting them at a better price than if you go to Toyota directly by a fair chunk. Um, but that's say these have already been done in this car so I know that's not an issue already. Uh, the new ones you're replacing with are actually an updated version as well so in theory they shouldn't crystallise like the original ones do. So by replacing the battery on this already, it gets up to speed um, eventually and I know it will start. So I'm pretty convinced the issue is a starter. So today we're replacing the starter motor and hopefully we'll have a hot start issue fixed. Let's do it. So our starter motor is down here, so it's pretty tricky to see right now. Uh, we're going to have to remove this pipe to get to it. We may remove the bottle and uh, to get to the nuts and bolts which are down there. We also need to remove the air box, which is pretty simple. And if we go underneath, we're going to remove the bottom panels uh, just so we can get access to underneath the starter motor and remove the wires. Which way? Lefty, So now the pipe's off, we can see the starter motor just down there. Um, I'm hoping this isn't going to be in the way too much, and so I'm going to leave it on for now. Next, remove the MAF sensor, just squeeze the button down. Might need a little bit of leverage from a screwdriver just to help it. It can be a bit sticky. There we go. Disconnect the hose. This is a non standard hose clip, so the other one went missing. Remove the holes. Uh, two clips at the front. Yeah, shuffle it out of the way. Filter out. And then the bottom of here are uh, two 10 mil um, bolts, and there's one at the side as well. Just drop them in the box, you don't lose them, and it should just come out relatively easily. So with the air box removed, we've got a couple of bolts to get to right down here. And they're pretty tricky to show you. Um, if you can see that kind of oval shape there, the first one is down here, so it's not this one, it's the one that's behind it, just behind here, look. So if, and the second one, again, if you follow the oval shape, there's a recess on here, on top of it, and the other one is down the top of there. So you can't really see it with the camera, um, they're outside, up against the engine block, and pretty fiddly to get to. So we're going to remove this panel underneath. These are 10 mil nuts. 
this panel should just bend out of the way. Eee, don't break. And if we look from below, up there, look, is the starter motor. Uh, there's two wires to connect it to it. Uh, one will be a nut, and the other one's a socket, a bit like the MAF sensor. Uh, it's got a little squeezy tab on there. As we're working with live terminals on the starter, we're going to disconnect the battery, which is under this panel here. Uh, we're going to disconnect the negative first and then the positive. And when you reconnect it, you want to do the positive first, then negative to avoid any short circuits. Yeah, it's just a 10mm nut on both. Easy peasy. That beeping noise is nothing to worry about. It's just the ECU resetting. Um, it means you're going to have to reset your radio, radio channels. Uh, if you have any lights on the dash, it's always worth doing that first. And it may sometimes clear your lights without having to do anything else. And use a long extension. Should be able to get to this one. 12 mil socket. And that was pretty tight. Now the gear mechanism is in the way um, of getting to this bolt here. So if you put it in reverse, this goes backwards as far as it can do uh, and moves it out of the way. And now you can get access to here. Now to do that, I'm using a 14 inch socket on a universal joint and an extension. I have removed the bottom panel um, so I can get underneath here. This makes things a lot easier. And it looks like that. I'm going to pop it back in place so I don't lose it. Let's leave it loose. This time I put the car in third gear, which moves this mechanism away again as best it can do. I'm using a 14mm socket again, this time a 3 8 um, universal joint. I couldn't find it earlier, that's the only reason I didn't use this one earlier. And an extension bar. And should be able to get on that nut relatively easily. It's tight. I've got a hole in my thumb. Ow. I'm just holding on to the starter motor at the other side. So it doesn't drop anywhere. Already disconnected the wires, so did that before we took the starter off so it didn't damage anything. Quite a long one this one. Hey! Excellent, Mr. Bond. I got the new starter from the starter motor and alternator company through eBay. Um, really, really good. It came next day. Um, this particular brand is a Casco. I've no idea if that's good or bad, to be honest. Um, but it did come next day, which I was quite impressed about. Um, I will put a link to their eBay shop and to this particular starter motor um, in the description below. Ooh, shiny. The replacement 2.2 kilowatt is significantly bigger than the original 1.4. Uh, and that's quite tight to get out, so this is going to be even more fun to get in. Right, getting the new start in there was really fiddly. Um, it's really tight at the back. Um, so trying to get it level uh, in the slot and then maneuver it around is, is quite tricky and uh, because of its weight as well it's hard to kind of hold it in position and twist it um, but what you do basically do is you kind of get it in the right place and as you turn it to the point where it wants to be and it kind of jumps in and then I went to this side and because you can get your fingers on this bolt that's closest to the front of the car just kind of hold that at the same time and use that as the guide till it drops into the threads and nip it in um, so it's yeah, a little bit of a fiddly one and it took a good 10 minutes of, uh, of huffing and puffing, but we got there.
So now the starter motor's in, it's just the reverse of what we've done already. So it seems a bit pointless filming, putting things back together again, because it just slows me down with the camera a lot. Um, so if I come across anything tricky, I will uh, stick the camera on for that. Um, but otherwise, it's going to be a quick fast forward to the end, and we should have a nice rapid starting RAV4. Thank <laughs> you. 